Hey, it's Terry Gorry, and this is the Irish Law and Small Business Podcast. So, let's talk about the Quinn Country documentary that was on there earlier this week in three parts. The Quinn Country documentary, in case you don't know, is a three-part documentary series that RTE broadcast earlier during the week, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, I think, about Sean Quinn, the former owner and uh, founder and uh, operator and proprietor of Quinn Cement and Quinn Glass and Quinn Insurance and the Sleeve Russell Hotel and various other hotels and pubs. The programme was called Quinn Country and it looked into the rise and fall, as it were, of Sean Quinn and I wasn't going to watch it in the first place because I felt it was going to put me in bad humour bad humour because I'd seen the promos for it and Quinn was being interviewed in the promos and I drew the conclusion that because Quinn was participating in it and giving interviews freely that he would have seen it as an opportunity to put his side of the story or set the record straight or whitewash the whole situation depending on your view. For that reason I wasn't going to watch it. However I did watch it and I was delighted that I did. Firstly because it's a well made series, well made insofar as it's well shot, camera work is good and there's interviews with all the main players. Secondly there's interviews with financial journalists and uh, other observers and so on who would have had a fair insight into the goings-on in relation to Quinn over the last many years since he lost control and his attempt to be uh, reinstated back in the business as it were as if nothing had happened but for that reason I was happy that I watched it and then after one day I noticed online there in the Leitrim Observer, I think it was, reported that Quinn was no longer supporting the programme. So <clears throat> Quinn probably expected some sort of a whitewash job or some sort of a tool with which to perhaps minimise the damage to his reputation or at least advance his argument, his proposition. But after watching one episode, he knew fairly quickly that the whole thing was going pear-shaped. He knew that it was a warts and all situation that the documentary maker was putting both sides of the story and was reporting accurately from various observers and various accounts and various voices, not just Quinn's voice and not just Quinn's sister's voice or Quinn's wife's voice. So after a day, the Leitrim Observer reported that Quinn was no longer supporting the programme and quite frankly, it looks like another spectacular gamble by Quinn that's gone pear-shaped, that's backfired because he gambled that this would be of help or assistance to him and in fact it's now gone and gone uh, badly wrong for him because the reaction online and the reaction on Twitter and so on uh, has been pretty damning of Quinn. The second observation I'd make would be the Well, the word, there's two or three words that crop in or pop into my head, having looked at the programme and having listened very carefully to the words uh, of Sean Quinn and the interviews, and indeed with his wife. The words that pop into my head are hubris, delusion and arrogance. Hubris is a word that I think is stamped all over Quinn and if you consider his wife's comments that uh, the parish priest, I think Father O'Reilly, was a backstabber and she said it with quite a degree of vehemence. He was a backstabber, she said, that he was out there killing in this house drinking wine and so on. Father O'Reilly, if that's his name, I think it is, denounced the violence that led to the criminal assault on Kevin Lunny and other violence that surrounded the campaign to have Quinn reinstated. 
But the idea that a priest, or indeed the idea that a person, would view another person as a backstabber for condemning that type of violence is mind-boggling, quite frankly. Mind-boggling. The question of hubris then arises because it transpires afterwards that Sean Quinn actually wrote to the papal nuncio to complain about the priest and the priest, whether Quinn's letter or intervention had anything to do with it or not, was actually transferred afterwards. Maybe he chose to be transferred, maybe he was transferred anyway, I don't know. But the idea of writing to the papal nuncio to complain about a parish priest who condemns uh, condemns a violent attack from the altar is absolutely nonsensical. It's absurd. The idea that a priest wouldn't condemn violence, the idea that an ordinary decent person wouldn't condemn the type of violence on Lunny um, is absurd. It's fanciful. That's one observation. The other observation I'd make would be this idea of Quinn that he seems to have this idea fixed in his mind that because he built these businesses, because he created the jobs, that somehow he's entitled to be reinstated, that he's entitled to be put back in the driving seat. This idea that he can borrow a boatload of money from the banks, not repay it, and carry on as if nothing happened, and we're talking over two billion on a gamble, the idea that you can be reinstated into some business in those circumstances, again, is absolutely absurd. It's like some fella borrowing a few bob to set up a Christmas stall below in Mullingar, gets 20 grand off the bank, is only able to pay it, and he's then uh, claiming somehow or other that the bank can't move against him, can't look for the money back, uh, can't act on foot of their security. Absolute nonsense. It struck me that Quinn gambled everything on Anglo Irish bank prices rising and they fell, and the CFDs were a spectacular a gamble that backfired badly. But any gambler knows, or anybody who participates in anything, whether it's business or sport or anything else, knows that when you lose, you lose. When it's over, it's over. And Quinn gambled and lost, and he bet the farm and lost, and he somehow or other doesn't seem to be able to accept that. He seems to think that he has some sort of an entitlement to be reinstated in former companies that he set up and jobs he created and so forth. That's, you know, clearly uh, an illogical position. Stories have come out afterwards that Quinn appeared to be fond of a gamble as well, fond of a punt. And um, I read a story there the other day online or in the newspaper about him having a dispute many, many years ago with a man over the price of something, some contract or other. And I think he brought your man to the pub and they called for a deck of cards and they decided to dispute the price of the contract on the basis of who drew the highest card. So if that was his attitude, maybe Quinn had... Uh, propensity to gamble but certainly he did remarkably well to start the business that he started he did remarkably well to create the jobs that he created especially in the location in the part of the country where he did it but the fact of the matter is and it's a very simple proposition he bet the farm he bet everything on anglo prices anglo irish bank prices and lost the other thing i would say about it would be that he said many times in the course of the documentary that the most profitable business was Quinn Insurance and Quinn Insurance was throwing off £200 million in profit a year. But the problem with Quinn Insurance and the regulator got involved with Quinn Insurance is because Quinn Insurance was underfinanced. There wasn't sufficient reserves put by it's an insurance company, remember. And they reckoned that the inadequacy or deficiency in the reserves was about 200 million. So it's actually arguable that the profits that Quinn was claiming for Quinn Insurance, the 200 million a year, were actually illusory and false profits because there wasn't sufficient reserves, there wasn't sufficient resources put by 
to deal with claims as they fell due. And ultimately, that's what did for and why the regulator put in or instructed that somebody go into Quinn Insurance and take it over because it was inadequately financed. And the fact of the matter is we're all paying for Quinn Insurance still with our motor car insurance and indeed with the universal social charge that we're all paying. So Quinn did really, really well, started fantastic businesses, started what appeared to be fantastic businesses, but bet everything on Anglo-Irish bank prices rising and they fell and the contracts for difference are a financial instrument that is essentially a gamble on a share price uh, when it goes wrong it goes wrong and there's a call going to be put on you if you're the holder of the CFDs uh, and you simply run out of cash very very quickly so I thought it was a good program I'm glad I watched it in terms of the his legacy clearly he started many businesses and was very successful he created great jobs and great employment and so on in the area but ultimately he gambled it all and lost sad situation very sad as I say Quinn's legacy will be that he built all these businesses created a huge amount of jobs but gambled the whole lot bet the farm and lost uh, and that's about the height of it what's your comments or what's your view on the situation did you watch the programme leave them down below there I'd be interested to see what you thought of it and uh, obviously there are just some observations uh, off the top of my head that I'm uh, recalling uh, it was a three-parter obviously it was long enough